episode of GHTV. I'm Alex. And I am Chris. Hey Alex, can you believe this weather today? It's pretty crazy, but I guess this is Minnesota and it's still February. You know what the best part about winter weather is? What's that? Snow days! Hi, I'm Shoei with GHTV News. I'm here with Eli, Brian, and Erica talking about the weather and how it affects the school. Alright, hi, I'm Eli. I'm from the Golden Hill News and we're here with Mr. Paulson. Um, so, Mr. Paulson, how does school not being canceled affect the way you get to school when the weather is bad? Uh, well, I live in town, so I don't live that far away, so it doesn't affect me too much. Um, but, you know, if the weather's bad, it's a pain for everybody to try to get here. The roads are bad. You know, you have to wipe off your car, and it's cold, and it sucks. But um, I live in town, so it doesn't affect me too much. All right. Um, do you think school should be canceled more often? Um... You know, I think that we have bad weather here a lot, so everybody's kind of used to driving in this weather. Um, everybody likes a snow day, everybody likes a day off. Um, and if you cancel it too much, then you have to make up days in June, and nobody wants to do that. But, uh, yeah, there's definitely some days when the roads are awful that I think we could cancel a little bit more, but nobody wants to go in June either. And then, any useful tips for driving in this Minnesota weather? Uh, slow down. Um, give yourself extra time if you wake up early. Um, don't be a maniac on the road. Take your time. If you get in an accident, it's going to take you a lot longer to get here than if you just slow down a little bit. So I guess that's about it. All right. Well, thank you very much. No problem. Hi, I'm Sheree with JHTV News. This is Dustin, and I got some questions. So has the weather made you rethink driving even when school wasn't canceled? No. I have four-wheel drive, so I get around pretty easy. Cool. Um, are you comfy with driving in this crazy weather? Yeah, because it makes it more fun. I can drift and it's not as boring as just driving on a road. Okay. And um, what should schools do when it comes to cancellations? Like, should they change anything on how they give the information to you? They should call instead of just putting it on the news. I think that they should call, especially if it's just like one specific school or area. I think they do do that. <laughs> Well, there you have it. Hi, I'm Brian with GHTV here with Tessa. Tessa, does the weather cause problems with you driving to school? Um, well, it's kind of bad out and the roads are pretty icy. Not, well, I mean, I guess it kind of does because my car is slips and slides a lot because it's just a little car. But um, when school's canceled and stuff like that, it's kind of nice that I don't have to risk driving to school. If we have a two-hour late start due to weather, do you still come? Yeah. Do you think they should cancel school more often? Um, kind of, because there's a lot of times where like the roads like are really bad and stuff like that, and people really shouldn't be driving, and yet they just decide not to cancel it because there's supposedly been too many cancellations throughout the school year. So I kind of think they should, but I understand why they don't. <laughs> All right, thanks for your time. Yep. Hi, I'm Brian with Mr. Zeberg. Uh, do you agree with school being canceled? Well, if we're talking about school being closed for uh, inclement weather, I know it's a very difficult decision, but I think that um, I think that we should have school much more often. We shouldn't be canceling school ever. Would you rather have a two-hour delay or cancellation? I would rather have school the full day. I don't even like the two-hour late starts. I think, um, I, here's the way I look at it. If people can get to work, to work at the Mayo Clinic, we can get to school. And they don't cancel or go on two-hour delays at the Mayo Clinic, obviously. How many snow days slash two-hour delays can we have in a year? Well, I know that after a certain number of them, we start making those days up in the springtime. Um, however, I don't know exactly what that number is, and I do not know that it's ever happened since I've been working in Rochester where we've had so many snow days and then had to make, day, make days up. I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't experienced that. All right, well, thank you for your time. Well, I have other, I have other opinions about snow days. Uh, first of all, just to like to let you know that um, obviously I would much rather be in school. When we do have a snow day, I'm here working. I don't get the day off. The secretaries don't get the day off. Our custodian doesn't get the day off. We're all here, so uh, if we can all make it to work, I think everybody else should be able to make it to work too. The one thing I do want to do is make sure everybody is safe. So um, 
if safety is an issue and you say, Mr. Zebart, I'm going to be late because the roads are snowy or icy, I totally understand that. You need to take your time, you need to get here safely. But the one thing I do know is even on snow days, the city buses run uh, and usually parking lots are plowed and people can get to where they need to go. I'm not a fan of the snow day. Thanks. Great, thank you for your time. Well, that was interesting. I definitely wouldn't want to drive in that weather either. Back to you. Well, that explains a lot. You know, a lot of people use the KTTC app on their phone so they know if school is closed or delayed. It's a good idea. When it's this cold and snowy outside, I can't help but think about the smokers and how much they freeze at lunch. I wonder how cold it would have to be to get them to give up their lunchtime smoke break. I don't know. They're pretty dedicated. It's not just the cold that is affecting smokers these days. That's right. There's talk about raising the cigarette tax again. We checked in with some Golden Hill students about their smoking habits and how the raising costs will affect them. There are a lot of smokers here at Golden Hill, and I'm here with Alex, Michael, and Jamie to interview students at Golden Hill to ask them about how they feel about the new upcoming taxes. Hi, I'm Alex, and I'm here with Chris Daniels. We're going to ask him a few questions about the new cigarette taxes. Indeed. <laughs> hey, Chris, do you smoke? I sure do, Alex. Oh, well, do you think that the new taxes will deter smokers from smoking? Nope. I don't think so at all. No? Okay. Why do you think that? Well, because if people want to smoke, they're going to smoke. That's they true. don't care if maybe it goes up another 50 cents or so. I sure don't care. Um, do you have trouble affording cigarettes? I do not. Oh, well. That concludes our interview. Thank you for your time. Well, thank you. Hi, I'm Max, and I'm here with Kayla, and you'll be in here about the cigarette prices and the tax that's coming. Um, so, Kayla, how many packs a week do you smoke? Like two. And uh, how do you afford your packs? I have a job. And uh, do you think with the new tax that you'll be able to smoke this much after? Yes. All right, well, that concludes our interview. I'm Michael. I'm here with Mr. Rude today. Ask him about some questions. What do you think about higher cigarette prices? Personally, the higher cigarette prices don't affect me. I don't smoke. Um, nobody in my family smokes, in my immediate family. Um, so that's economically, it doesn't hurt me at all. Uh, I don't like the fact that we have people now taxing things that are habits and taxing people's habits in, in uh, a way to gain money that and pretend it's not against the people or against the economy. I, yeah, I wait to see what next tax they're going to do. Are they going to put a, an additional tax on buying certain types of foods? Are they going to tax your clothes next? What else are they going to tax? If they can just arbitrarily pick something to tax, when do we set limits and control on it? So I don't, I don't necessarily agree with the fact that they're raising prices just to, to gain more taxes. It's the same with gas other things. It, it affects everybody in, in some way or another. It hurts everybody. What do you think about, what do you think it will help people stop smoking? Um, I don't think so. Overall, there's a few people might quit, but I think the people that are going to quit are people that have considered it or tried to pretty much already. This might give them a little bit more incentive, but statistics have shown all the price increases that they've had from the beginning of the time of selling cigarettes to the now has not been a deterrent to keep people from smoking. They just find other ways to pay for it. Hi, I'm Alex, and I'm here with Tyler Moore. We're going to ask him a few questions about the new cigarette taxes. Hey, Tyler, how many packs a week do you smoke? I smoke about three packs a week. How do you afford your cigarettes? Uh, McDonald's pays for my cigarettes. Will you be able to afford cigarettes after the tax increase? Most definitely not very cheap. Right, well, thank you for your time. Wow, that could sure get expensive. Well, that's the issue. Might not matter a whole lot if there is no open campus at the new building next year. That's right. We sent our news team to get some information about an issue that's important to all of us, open campus. Our story today is on open campus here and at the new school. Let's see what some faculty and students have to say about it. Hi, my name is Courtney. I'm here with Sam. We're going to talk to him about Open Campus. Do you use your Open Campus? Yeah, I use my Open Campus every day. How would you feel if you lost it next year at the new building? I'd be a little angry. Why? Because 
that's like a break in the middle of school and that's when I go and smoke for six. Thank you. All right, hi, my name is Hajay and I'm here with Tessa. So Tessa, do you use your open campus? I do, every day pretty much. <laughs> okay, so how would you feel if you had to earn your open campus? Um, I'd be a little upset just because it's kind of nice to just be able to have your open campus, but I wouldn't be too angry just because of the fact that like, I feel like I'd be able to earn it easily. Okay, well, there you have it. Yeah. I'm Delon. This is Miss Molly. We're here with Today's TV. Um, Ms. Molly, how do you feel about students having open campus? I feel like it's a great opportunity for students to learn responsibility. I do have to admit that makes me grumpy when students are late back from lunch. Mm -hmm. um, do you think students should have to earn open campus? Yes, definitely. I think if, uh, if you aren't in good standing in your classes or if you make a habit of coming back late, then you have to earn that privilege to be able to go. Well, thank you. That's all we have. Mr. Zubart, is Open Campus going to change at the new building? You know, we're, we've been talking about um, and thinking a lot about what we're going to do as far as Open Campus in the new building. Um, so we have made no final decisions uh, right now as we go. Open campus would be the same as it is here at Golden Hill. However, there are a bunch of concerns that we have, um, particularly with our new neighborhood and whether our new neighbors um, will be receptive to, to having an open campus. And we've had the conversation about um, currently Every student in the high school, grades 10 through 12, automatically gets open campus. And um, we've been thinking, or I've been thinking a lot about, maybe students, instead of automatically getting open campus, should have to earn their open campus. Um, so there's, we're having conversations. I'm having conversations with students. I'm having conversations with staff. And we're going to make some decisions probably before the end of the school year about open campus for next year, but no final decisions have been made yet. All right, well, thank you. All right. So that was it for open campus today, y'all. Y'all already know what it is. So we're going to see y'all next week. Maybe. Maybe. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That new weave come out next week. Y'all might not see me next week because you know <laughs> I already heard Y'all already know. But anyways, boo boo. We'll see you next week, boo boos. Love okay. y'all. Hi, deuces. I really hope we don't lose our open campus. That would be tough. Speaking of changes, we were wondering if we would be getting a new mascot to go along with our new building next year. Check it out. Hi, my name is Chris, and today we're going to get some opinions from the students and staff about whether we should get a new mascot or keep the Golden Hill Bullfrog. Hi, I'm Ruby and I'm here with Susie. Ms. Susie, I'm going to ask you questions about the mascot. Yeah. Um, why did you pick the uh, bullfrog as a... Okay, well that's a great question because really, I didn't pick the bullfrog. The bullfrog got picked by whatever students were at Golden Hill when Golden Hill first started as a school way back in the 1930s. So the bullfrog has been here at Golden Hill for a long, long time. So are you thinking about getting a new mascot for a new Yes. I'm not really thinking about <laughs> getting a new mascot. I'd like to bring the bullfrog with us, and here's the reason why. Because a lot of people ask, are we going to call the new building Golden Hill? Well, we can't call the new building Golden Hill because this building is Golden Hill, and this building is called Golden Hill because it's in the Golden Hill neighborhood of Rochester. And so it wouldn't make sense to bring the name with us. But we can bring the mascot with us because Golden Hill is not going to be used as a school after we leave. So I think we should bring it as part of remembering history and remembering this building and remembering all the people that went to school here before us. Okay, I love the Thank you. I love the bullfrog. Go bullfrogs. Hi, I'm Yvette, and I'm here with Shay. I'm going to ask Shay about some questions about our mascot. So Shay, what do you think about our school mascot? Our school mascot? I think the frog goes well with Golden Hill. Um, I honestly don't see another mascot that fits the school character. Okay, what's your favorite animal? 
singers and songwriters we have in the building, we should have the most amazing school song ever written. You mean all the singers and songwriters that will be featured in the upcoming talent show? Yep, that's them. Anyways, let's check back in with Z-Bar for his weekly words of wisdom. Welcome to another session of Z60. First of all, I'd like to thank all the people that came and helped and worked out down at the MAP conference. Um, greatly appreciated and actually as a principal quite proud of uh, everybody's efforts and cooperation. Um, also quite proud about all the students that accomplished their out of school assignments uh, while we had those days off. Um, the very few of you that didn't accomplish your assignments we'll be talking about open campus uh, for you in the future coming up real soon. Uh, two other things I'd like to talk about real briefly. One is language in the halls. I think sometimes students forget that we have a daycare in our building and frequently I try to stand up on that corner and watch students as they walk down the hall and uh, it, it does bother and disturb me a little bit when I hear inappropriate language being talked. We have babies that are developing their uh, language skills uh, just inside that door or we have babies just inside the other door that are taking naps. So it'd be, uh, I'd ask that students uh, be conscious of that, be aware, and use appropriate language and not be loud and disruptive and, uh, while you're walking past the nursery in particular. The other thing I want to talk about real briefly is personal belongings. I know a lot of students have cell phones, smartphones, iPods, different kind of music players. Really, uh, if you're bringing those to school, you need to be responsible for them. You need to keep them on you, with you, uh, to plug them in, to charge them, to leave them in the back of a room, you're essentially asking for trouble. Um, I'd like to think that all students here at Golden Hill are uh, very respectful and responsible of other people's property. However, um, that's not always the case. So the responsible really, responsibility really lies on you and your personal belongings. So think about that when you're thinking about, I need to plug this in and charge it. Don't leave stuff lay around. Have a great day. Thanks, Mr. Zebart. And last but not least, let's hear from Lois for her weekly life tips. Welcome to another segment of Life Tips. You might notice there are a few things behind me, a bunch of eggs. Well, our middle school Rams is actually having a clothing drive. So. Uh, help out if you have if you're cleaning closets going from winter to spring bring some extra clothes here they're going to be collecting them in the next week um, I'd like to take this time also to thank all students who participated in the MAP conference in a many many different ways from checking in participants to being a student ambassador to entering data onto the computer to giving directions um, thank you from the MAP Association and from your staff here at Golden Hill. 
was a proud moment for us and I hope it was a good time for you. So building tip today, consider how you use your time. Constructive use of time is a good thing for us as an individual and as a school community. So have a good week and talk to you next week. Well that does it for this week's edition of GHTV. Thanks for tuning in and to be sure to join us next week for another news edition. Golden Hill. You stay classy, Golden Hill.